from all over England. You Muppet, ba ba ba. You don't know casuals. What I don't respect is, I called him out for a fight. He said he's gonna come to Miami and glass me. Right, so today we have Mr. Alvarez, well known on YouTube, um, also featured in a documentary with Vlad Bible and Vice TV, which has had uh, over well over a million views on YouTube. Ooh, hey, from America, for Yank, where's him with the club, Jack? You see that? How are you today, Derek? I'm great, brother. Good to uh, finally meet you in person, Matty. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. Hey, yeah. I got a lot of respect for you and what you do for the scene. So I'm glad to do this with you. You feel me? So ask away. Okay, no, that's great. And I really appreciate you doing this. Uh, just have to say that we um, have some one-off sponsors today, which is 80s Casuals. Um, and also we have another sponsor called Casuals Attire. So over to you, Derek. Um, you've done a lot of YouTube videos. and. Uh, I have to mention the comments because you come in for a lot of hate and a lot of people offering you out and stuff. Um, so what I want to do today, Derek, is I want to get down to you, the person, and not the YouTube character, because I think you're two different people. Uh, it's playing a character and having fun with it. It's entertainment. So, yeah, obviously there's a, you know, not just with me, with other people who are in different forms of entertainment, whether it's sports entertainment, the internet, you know what I mean? You have your persona, but yeah, I'll, I'll ask, you know, ask me whatever you want. Yeah, okay. So, you're obviously American, you live in America, and your sports are baseball um, and American football, amongst other things. So what attracted you to football culture and the casual culture? Well, yeah, you're right that, that uh, soccer, as they say here, is not one of the top sports, but as for me, I started going to football matches in 1979. My first match when I'm five years old was, uh, you know, Fort Lauderdale Strikers. That's our team. Now we, got into my, now we got into Miami, but we used to be Fort Lauderdale Strikers. And it's the same grounds. So my first match, I was five years old, 1979. I saw George Best, didn't I? George Best was playing on Fort Lauderdale Strikers. We had a lot of people that was Manchester United as far as staff and the other players and stuff like that. So... I was already seeing the logos back then at that age. And then uh, my adopted father is an athlete or was an athlete, rest in peace. And uh, he went to, to University of Florida and he played, uh, you know, American football and he played baseball. So he came into my life at three or four years old. And right away, he would always be taking me to sports events. So uh, basically Fort Lauderdale striker soccer was not attended very well. So basically what they would do is they gave out free tickets to all the elementary schools and middle okay. schools and, and youth programs. So then I started going in kindergarten. Thing is, it was like a, what you'd call an optional field trip. So like everybody didn't want to go to these games and everybody's parents didn't want to go pick them up. However, my adopted father, he was well into British culture. He smoked a vintage cigarettes. He had a Porsche, he was into European culture. Okay. You know, he'd wear, a bla he'd wear a blazer with a turtleneck. My uncle, my mom's brother moved to London, lived in London for years. So like my family, they're hippies. They're well into British culture. I, I grew up listening to British bands, The Who, Rolling Stones, all that. That's what we listened to. So wow. then so then my it was a big deal to my adopted father that, that, that he, he knew what was going on, that Manchester United and that this big, this famous guy, George Best, was here. So he would always go with me. So then and I always thought it was cool. I used to go to all the other kind of games, NFL, baseball. But since I was a little kid, I always thought that like the, the soccer thing was, was cool. It was different. And the stadium was different. The stadium was like more, it wasn't well attended. So it was like, a, it wasn't the same as, it wasn't as, as polished or as corporate or mainstream or whatever you want to call it as the other sports. So mm -hmm. I started going as a kid and then I started getting in a lot of trouble, getting arrested, being in gangs and being in youth programs. And they would also give the tickets to youth programs. So I'll be 14, 15 years old. I'll be going at that stage. And then later in life to, so then to, to go another direction, you asked how I got into all of it. Then I got into punk in 1986 and, right. and by, and then, so I'm listening to, you know, in 1987, I'm listening to Cockney Rejects, Oppressed, Last Resort, Become a Skinhead. And then I'm reading all the lyrics and seeing what they're talking about. So I knew about football violence and hooliganism in the eighties. And then there's a book 
called Skinhead by Nick Knight. And I have that one. I'm like 15, 1989. And then it has a whole section about hooliganism. It has the girl with the dart in her eye. It showed all the yeah. weapons. It was talking about firms. So I was well into it. Or let's say I knew about it. And then over, over a course of evolution, with like the Among the Thugs book came out. Among the Thugs, you know that book by Bill Buford? Yeah, I've heard of it. I haven't uh, read it, but I've heard of it. Yeah. Mandatory, mandatory. And it talks about Red Army firms and it talks about United in the heyday and everything like that. And then uh, also in my, fir- in my skinhead group here, uh, I had two lads that were from Manchester, that they're, they're second generation Red Army. So right. they, they, came, they came into my group in the early 2000s. And then when I seen that, somebody told me, oh, we got some, some English guys in our group now. I said, like, really? And when I met them, I'm fascinated by the culture. I'm asking them everything about it. You know, they brought me a, a scarf from United. This is the early 2000s. So then one of those lads is the one who I started Miami Casuals with. So it's been a slow evolution. Maybe some people think, I don't know where they think I got into this from, but it's been a slow evolution since the 80s. And I was trying to get, I was, I was trying to get hooliganism going, bringing my lads to fight against the Tampa Bay. I was trying to get that going in 2007, 2008. So this has been a, this is, it didn't just, just come out of nowhere. I didn't just watch, I mean, that, I didn't just watch Green Street hooligans. That's, that's, in, that's interesting, Derek, because... I mean, a lot of people, I mean, you've came to fame on YouTube um, and you were popping up in in lots of our, our Facebook groups, our lot of football Facebook groups. And people wonder, who's this guy, where he's from? Um, and you've just answered that, which, you, you know, your family, you had family in England. You grew up listening to a lot of our our culture. Um, so I think it's important for my viewers to know that. and and who you are. Um, so why did you start the YouTube channel, Derek? Yeah, well, I think about it is, you guys are just seeing me related to the hooliganism, but I've been doing all type of stuff, making videos, other type of videos for a long time. Me and my friends made movies of street fighting and gang violence. So I've been on NBC and Telemundo. So I've been doing all kinds of stuff. I stole a band's banner, a band called Slapshot. I got pretty famous for that. So you guys are just seeing me do this type of stuff with the new channel in the past, two th- from 2018 with the hooliganism. But I've been already a personality making music and doing videos and doing other stuff before that. But uh, it all started with that Muppet Steve Dolan, that weasel. We'll because, mention him later. <laughs> uh, well, that's how the YouTube channel starts. Because what it was is, and uh, I was with more with the extremism, with the politics, let's say uh, into 2017, and I, I retired from it. I had problems with the other leftists. There were a bunch of jabronis or whatever. So anyway, I walked away from the politics. And uh, I was more living a militant skinhead lifestyle at that time in the fashion as well. And then the hooliganism was always in the back of my mind and the casual scene. But uh, I never had got so attracted to the casual scene that I was going to you know, think to become a casual convert to that, let's say. But uh, beginning of 2018, end of 2017, I started, you know, what am I going to do with myself? I have to be obsessed with something. So I started thinking more and more about casuals. Once I forgot about the politics, I started looking at the clothes more. So then uh, I got this book. I bought this book. <laughs> you know that? Yeah, Casual. yeah. No, famous book by Phil Fulton, yeah. So thing about it is, I bought myself that book. I started looking deep into it. And then I, I, I saw like that book was the best book, the main book. So then I ordered that for myself at the end of 2017. And then I started reading it in January. And, I, and before I was done reading it, I bought a Burberry scarf and that's it. In my mind, casuals. So I, and then I knew, yeah. I, knew, I, knew, I knew we had the football club coming up. I knew they, I felt that the team was gonna happen. So I said, I'm gonna be the first one with a, with a supporters group, with a firm, casuals, whatever like that. So I start, I'm the first supporters group of Inter Miami. I started in January, 2018. So now here's the thing about it. I didn't say firm and I didn't say hooligan. I was talking about casuals as a subculture, as, yes. a, as, a, as an evolution of skinhead or you know, in relation to a punk or a rude boy or a mod. Maybe it wasn't like that in the original days, but it's become that. It's been codified into a subculture. So apart from the football, like in the same relation of skinheads with the music, with the camaraderie, with the gangs, so I was thinking for the culture and the fashion. So I said, Miami casuals. I got in the Facebook group, uh, American group. 
and instantly people started coming against me from all over England. You muppet, ba ba ba. You don't know casuals, and uh, and and then I started being like, yo, fuck you to everybody. Like you don't yeah. know who the fuck I am. You don't know who I am. And uh, from there, then it started people pe people saying that they're gonna do this to me. They're gonna do that to me. Everybody's coming against me. So I said, okay, well, fuck all of you into Miami firm hooligan. I'll fight all you guys. I don't care. I'll fight. I'll come to England and fight you. You know what I mean? And, and then it start, everybody's coming and, and attacking me. And then this one chap was on there with a mask. And then he said, he's coming to Orlando with three guys. And what's up, dude? Let's fight. I'm like, all right. Ba, 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 ba. But then he wouldn't tell me what firm he's in. I'm like, what is this? What, what do you mean? You, what, you represent that? You're going to you wanna get a, have a hooligan fight, but you don't tell me what firm you're in? What kind of thing is that? Exactly. So then, yeah. so then it was Millwall. It right, Millwall. I said, oh, my God. I'm just starting out in this game. I'm already going right to the top, to the most feared group or, you know, one of the top group of all time, the standard. Millwall is the standard of hooliganism yeah. to me. So anyway, I'm like, oh, great. So whatever, though, it's whatever. And then uh, Dan Dolan hits me up. He had multiple accounts. Then he hits me up on his own account with his face. And at this time, he's passing himself off that he's a top boy in Millwall. He go, he go to Bulgaria. And he's over there with them. They don't know any better. They don't know the Scottish accent. He's okay. over there passing them. That's what, he's do That's what he does. He goes around to Europe, passes himself off as Millwall. All those people respect Millwall. So anyway, he had it on a you know, book. He's written up. So I think he's the top boy at Millwall. And he's yeah. talking to me friend. He's talking to me friendly now. You all right, mate? I says, yeah, yeah. I said, what's up? We cool? Yeah, yeah. I says, well, listen, man. I said, here's what we can do. I said, let's do a 10 on 10, like forest fight, professional. And for money and pay-per-view, you know, Miami casuals versus Millwall, 10 on yeah. 10, we make money. We make money. We put it on pay-per-view. He says, yeah, mate, sounds good. Let's do it. He's speaking on behalf of Millwall. So I say, so I say, all right, here's what you do, mate. Get in front of your pub in Bermondsey, wherever, you know, you get in, the, in your top pub. You stand in front, put everybody with masks on. And this is before the pandemic, you know, so everybody put ballets yeah. on. Everybody put ballets on. You stand in front. You call us out, and then that'll start it. Then I'll do one, and that's how we promote it. Two in front, yeah. And then he says, he says, yeah, mate. He says, sounds good, but my guys won't understand it. He says, you do it first. I said, okay. So then I done the first video, based on him passing himself off as he's the top boy at Millwall. The top boy, yeah. So, so I done the first video, but this message goes out to Steve Dolan. All the Millwall hooligans. Hey, brother, I hear what you've been saying about Miami casuals. I hear what you've been saying about South Florida. And I hear what you've been saying about America, brother. And you've been saying, fuck Miami, fuck Miami casuals. It was only a Facebook video. I didn't think it was going to get, fa you know, I didn't know it was going to go viral. So I went to the gym. I come back in two hours. It's got 7,500 hits, 10,000 hits. It's blown up. And now I'm nearly crooked. I was nearly crying because I said, oh my God, I make a viral video and it's only on Facebook. I should have put it on YouTube. So I tried to take it down. I scrambled to make a YouTube channel. Then I put it on YouTube, but it had already spread by this point, which I don't, you know, which is not a bad thing. But yeah. uh, basic, basically the whole YouTube channel came from me thinking like, damn, okay, well, if I did it one time, I could do it again. Or if I don't do it in one shot, I'll do it in a bunch of strikes. So now my YouTube channel, yeah. My YouTube channel, my YouTube channel got over a million views too. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, and I already had, I already had over a collective million views and other things I've done before I had this YouTube channel. But anyway, to conclude that tale, so then uh, my, my Facebook is blowing up. People are threatening me. You can't, ba 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 ba. <laughs> but and some of those messages, some of those messages are more like serious. Like it's, it's not just an insult. It's, it's hey, I'm Millwall. We don't know this guy, Dolan. We don't know who that is. We don't know who you are. What's, nice. What are you on about? So the thing is this. So then I'm getting all these messages that look serious from lads that are, that are saying they're Millwall. And then I, I says, hey, listen, this guy is your top boy. He, we don't know him. We've never seen him before. He's not with us. I says, yeah, well, let me talk to somebody that I've seen before in the videos, in the real football factory or something. How can this guy be out there saying he's this and, and that he's not really in your firm? And then I said, let me talk to somebody. So then they gave me a number and I talked to one of their lads from the Millwall firm and we sat there and talked for a while like we're talking right now. And he's looking at me, he says, he says do you still have the messages? And I, I'm not the biggest on tech. And I was like, I guess, yeah. He says, can you screenshot them? 
I said, I think so. I don't know how to do it, but let me try. So I done it. And I gave him all the screenshots with Steve Dolan saying that he's talking on behalf of Millwall and do it. So mm -hmm. then once I done that, that, that lad, I'm not gonna mention his name. He says, he says, top man. He says, top man, Dell. He says, listen, do whatever you want. Leave us out of it. We've got nothing to do with him. We've got nothing to do with what you're doing. Do whatever you want. Just leave us out of it. And he said, he said, and this is what, this is what I love that he said, this was so poetic. He says, uh, he said, I just said, well, well, let's do this, man. Why not me? Now I'm talking to you guys. Let's do this. The same idea, but let's really do it with us. He says, mate, we don't do it for the love of, uh, we don't do it for the fame or the money. He said, we do it for the love of violence. And I thought that was great. So one day I'm going to use that for a title of a book or something. <laughs> so basically, that, that's, the, that's the origin of how the whole YouTube uh, hooliganism, Miami casuals sort of thing came to be. Okay. I will, well, well, think, let me say this. Let me say this. Uh, you, me, Dolan, whether, whether everybody respects or not what we're doing, or everybody believes in this internet hooligan sort of thing, we're all doing our part to keep the culture alive, including yeah. him whether he's a fraud or not and everybody knows what he's about but you still got to give him a certain degree of respect for putting the work in and spreading the culture and, and having a hub where everybody could get together a lot of people don't like me maybe or take the piss out of me maybe it's banter but my videos serve as a place for people to meet and talk and yeah. lads and talk and tell stories so with that being said i don't think any nobody has anything against you i think you come at it from a, a pretty pure perspective you're not saying you're something you're not you're not coming from a different country and trying to interpret it. No. So, uh, but I, I do think that the three of us did something to keep the culture going when there was a lull for a period before the pandemic and everything. And, you know, Vice documentary trying to say it's not going on anymore. That's not true. The, the hooliganism never died. It was more in the lower leagues or happening elsewhere. The, the media, the UK media, doesn't want to support the hooliganism because they feel it's right wing. So they don't want to give any good positive attention to it. Mm. But I was getting videos sent to me since I'd done the Millwall video. Lads, the bigger firms, I was going against them in, in, uh, in videos, having to pop at the bigger firms because that's the, the names I knew. And they were, they, were all, they were all slagging me off. But smaller firms, smaller clubs start, like Plymouth started reaching out to me and message says, Del Boy, we like what you're doing. Keep it up. You're all right. You can come here with us if you want. Anytime you ever come to England. So then from there, I started learning more and in the comments. So anyway, uh, I'll just leave it like that with that Dolan character. What I don't respect is I called him out for a fight. He said he's going to come to Miami and glass me. You had that fucking glass by the pool there, didn't you? That's going to go in your fucking face, you stupid cunt. What's come here, fucking Millwall. We'll fucking fuck you up. In fact, we'll fucking go to America. That's what we'll do. <laughs> right, well, forget about I had a, you know, I had, I had a boxing match set up for us. Right. And it was gonna, it was gonna happen in in Sunderland. That's and Sunderland, yeah. I remember Sunderland, our conversations. Yeah, Sunderland Seaburn Casuals. Yeah, one of my mate, one of my mates is in that, and and their his family's in boxing, and they had loads of boxing matches with Newcastle and Borough and other firms. No problem, the security, no problem. So he would have got fifteen hundred quid just to show for two minutes, four rounds. And then besides that, a percentage of pay-per-view, percentage of merchandise, a percentage of the live event. He stood to make a lot of money. And the thing is, we had the whole thing set up. And then he backs out. I think that he was talking to you. And he says, oh, I've moved on from that. That's, yeah, I was just about to say that, Derek. Uh, I was speaking to him. And I was going to do a little interview you. Uh, oh, sorry, I was going to do an interview with him. And I asked him that question. And what you just said, I've moved on from all that. So whatever you Sissy. take from that, you will. Um, <laughs> Geezer's okay. a mother, isn't it? So you you actually came to England for six months. Mm. Uh, right. In 2000, you 2019. Beginning a of the lot summer. Of areas, 2019. Uh, and you've just mentioned the Plymouth boys, um, the central Plymouth. element. Oh god. Uh, we are central element. <laughs> they really took you in. So can you tell us a bit about your time down in Plymouth? Oh, Wow, man, I could I could talk forever. I, I, I miss Plymouth every day, honestly. And then uh, the great history, America comes from Plymouth. You know, our history together, the Mayflower, the Mayflower, yeah. ste the Mayflower Steps, the 400 year anniversary. So the people of Plymouth, I think for my, 
when I started researching and everything, I felt like the people of Plymouth love America more than everybody else in England. And there is that connection. Look, Argyle, their pilgrim is their mascot, right? Yeah. So, so the thing is, it, it, it goes even deeper than just the TC firm and the Plymouth lads. But uh, the entirety of it, I can't say enough good things. Those are, those are some of the best people. Those are my brothers. Those are my, I look at them as family and the way they looked after me. Because the thing is this, England, is, first of all, I thought everybody wanted to fight me. And everybody said they're going to do this to me and that to me. I thought I was yeah. going to make a lot of I thought I was going to make a lot of money fighting. You know what what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Well, then nobody wanted to fight like uh, that kind of thing, you know? So, uh, well, that, then the thing is the work situation is much different in England. Here in America, in Miami, anybody, illegal alien, you don't speak English, whoever, you walk up to the Home Depot, which is a, a, a hardware store, you stand out there, people come by looking for laborers. They pay you a hundred bucks a day with, right. with, with no skills, whatever, just for basic labor. Anybody can, culture. Yeah. anybody can do that right now. You don't need, you don't need this uh, insurance, NCIS or whatever. So the thing Green is that, car, yeah. well, in England, the job market in the UK, it's not easy. You can't just go work. Otherwise you no. got to work cash work. So that's, that's what I ended up having to do, which was uh, find, you know, work on a fair with some jippos, you know, I work on decorating, you know, man. And also normally I teach martial art or do bouncing. So those kind of, you know, there you got your pub watch. You can't just go be a bouncer. You got to be sort of- No, it's all watch. regified now, yeah. Yeah, so, so the thing is this, I was skint before long and relying on my manager. I was in, you know, and those guys looked after me. Those guys looked after me, I can't say that. My best friend, Steph, his brother, Sean, my mate, Adder, Jock, Moses, Martin, Dengu, I could go on and on, Sheridan Davey, I could go on and on. Maybe some people don't want to be named, but uh, Plymouth TCE, Central Element Firm, and going back, A38s. I know stuff. I, I was studying the whole Plymouth history of their firm. Yeah. Even I could, I could find out different beliefs, what the name came from. So anyway, the city of Plymouth, the, when I got there in June of 2000, and uh, in the summer of 2019, it was a record heat. So there's, I get, Plymouth, it looks like Miami. Everybody's walk around with no shirts on, tattoos, shorts. <laughs> just like I was in Miami. And it's by the water. And I'm yeah. going to tell you this. Different people in different territories are different. In Manchester, in these northern places, and uh, Liverpool, compared to southern people of uh, Plymouth, Janners, to me, it's like Florida and New York or Texas. The people are different. So the thing is, for me, yeah. it's surrounded by water and it's warm. So the people are warm. The people in Plymouth are like the people in Fort Lauderdale, where I'm from, yeah. in a lot of ways. And from the food to, the, to Argyle, I love Plymouth Argyle. That brings this whole city together. I love Plymouth. I love England and I love UK. Everywhere I went, I enjoyed. But uh, Plymouth, Plymouth is where, I, you know, that's my second home. That's my home in England. Okay. Love- I've actually, um, I've got an interview coming up with, uh, with a top Plymouth boy called Mike Lever. Um, so yeah, um, really good guy, uh, really interested and waiting to interview him. Um, so to finish up, Derek, uh, what's your future, mate? What do you see yourself doing in the future? Uh, if you go to my, my channel, Diablo TV, YouTube, you'll see I got this bone face character. This uh, fascist neo Nazi guy, and yeah. uh, he challenged, he challenged me to a to a to a fight. So I'm looking to do a, some sort of fight with him. I don't know boxing, MMA, whatever. But uh, ultimately, uh, I want to move back to England and compete in the unlicensed boxing. And my mate, that's from Seaburn Casuals, he said I could stay with him, and I could train with him with his dad. His dad is a trainer. I'd like to live in England in England, eat the food, hear, hear the commands, you know, so part of my dream besides everything else, you know, I got a lot of uh, goals with the casuals, with, with my music, with promoting the scene and the subculture of casuals and promoting the football culture in America. But uh, really, I, 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 I'm dying to move back to England someday and uh, get involved with the, with the, with the, the unlicensed boxing and uh, 
meet more firms, meet more lads that I didn't get to meet last time all over the UK. Also, I was in Jersey, Jersey Island. I love Jersey yeah. Island. Uh, and I want to go back there. So I got a lot more things I want to do in England. And then, uh, you know, a lot more clobber to buy, a lot more lads to talk to, a lot more videos to make to preserve this history, you know, that the next generations can move on. You see, it's kicking off. They said it's over with. I, you see what happened. Millwall versus West Brom. You see Manchester versus Le United versus Leeds. It's kicking off in England. Young lads. I'm seeing these are younger kids. So the culture's moving on. I give you maximum respect. You and all, I love your channel. It's great. I, I just uh, I was watching some stuff last night. Uh, this lad, Andrew Porter, uh, Suicide Squad. I really yeah, enjoyed that. Finally, yeah. I, it's a book I mean to get and everything like that. So uh, keep doing what you're doing. Let's do this again sometime. Uh, respect you, all your supporters, all the lads uh, across the world. You know what I mean? Keep the faith. This thing of ours must be preserved for all time. <laughs> okay, Derek. Whatever anybody says about you, and um, whether they're negative, you have, they have to agree that you love our culture, you love England football casuals, that you want to keep the subculture going. You know it's not all about violence and hooliganism. There's a lot more to it. There's the camaraderie, there's the clobber, the trainers. Um, I will get you back for a part two in the near future, if that's okay. Anytime, and thank you very much, Derek. Um, it's been really interesting, mate. Cheers. So that was Derek Alvarez. Check out his YouTube channel. Um, there's lots of stuff on there. And there'll be more videos coming from UK Casual soon.